do you think, Esther McVeigh, that it makes a difference um, that you have a very different background? You didn't go to Eton and all the rest of it. How would it feel different to have a woman of your background leading the Conservative Party? Well, our party is a broad church. It always has been. It's about uh, meritocracy. Uh, and for me, our party is also about social mobility. It's about anybody can come from anywhere and achieve the highest post in the land so long as they are prepared to work hard enough, so long as they can get a good team together and so long as you've got a vision that reaches out to the country. And that's why I'm travelling the country all the time um, as part of a pub road show with blue-collar conservatives to really hear what people want us to do once we've delivered Brexit, what do they want after that? And they want money in schools, they want money going to police, and they also, which I've announced today, is the public sector pay guarantee, because people want to know that they're going to have a fair crack at okay. the whip too. But we're not there yet, we're not out of the EU yet, and your position on that is essentially that there's not going to be another negotiation, they're not really going to negotiate, so we have to be prepared to leave at the end of October with no deal if necessary. So I'm being very honest about, A, what's happened to that withdrawal agreement. It was absolutely uh, defeated uh, in the House. So the House don't want it, MPs don't want it. In the country, in the EU elections that we saw, people do not want that withdrawal agreement. So now we've got to say, no, no bits of tweaking is going to get that withdrawal agreement right. And equally, when Theresa May got the extension to the 31st of October, they'd said, we're not with opening that withdrawal yeah. agreement. So, and on top of that, so I think other candidates have got to be really honest, okay. to get this through by the 31st of October, if that is key to you, you couldn't even get an act through on the floor of the House. So what I'm saying is actually what is possible Let's come, come on to that in more detail. But to be absolutely clear, your policy feels to me almost identical to Nigel Farage's policy. Is there any real difference between you and Nigel Farage about how we get out on the 31st of October? Well, I know what I'm saying. I don't necessarily know what he's necessarily saying, saying, but exactly I'm the saying... There's no difference. I'm saying we want a free trade agreement. Yeah. I'm saying no deal is back on the table so because anybody who's done any negotiations knew as soon as the Prime Minister took no deal mm. off the table, you'd ruin your negotiation hand. So I'm looking for what's the best for the country and with a free trade agreement. That is exactly the same policy as the Brexit party. You've called Nigel Farage a tour de force. You've been quite warm towards him compared to other Conservatives. Would you work with him? He wants to be part of this process. He wants to be part of the negotiation. If you win this campaign, if you become Prime Minister, do you open the door to Nigel Farage? What I would be doing was delivering Brexit yeah. so we don't yes or need... No. Sorry, do you open the door to Nigel Farage? Listen. We don't need a Brexit party once we've delivered Brexit. The whole reason this but campaign this... came about is because we never got out of the EU on the 29th of March. So one step at a time, and what I will do is no negotiations because we need to be out on the 31st of October. You've also said that if you become Prime Minister, your cabinet, for that period at least, would not include Remainers. So can we be clear? You get rid of the Chancellor of the Exchequer, you get rid of the Foreign Secretary, you get rid of the current Brexit Secretary, you get rid of, I think, about 20 of the current cabinet are Remainers. So you clear them all out. So, so this is what I said. It's a limited time until the 31st of October. And what we've got to make sure that the Cabinet believes in leaving on the 31st of October. Now, if they voted Remain, but now believe they in leading on the, leaving on the 31st of October, because what we don't want, because there's hardly any time there, I can't have people saying this isn't what we want to do. You can't have people resigning. Sure. You've now got to work together to make sure we get out. And then once we've got out, okay. anybody can be in the Cabinet because then we go back to Conservative values to right. deliver our promises to so, the country. So you become Prime Minister. There's quite a clearing out of the current Cabinet. You then sit down with your new Cabinet, presumably including people from the ERG and so forth. You sit down with Sir Mark Seddle, who's the Cabinet Secretary, and he presumably sells you what he told Theresa May in his leaked letter. And he says no deal would mean food prices going up by 10%, our national security being disrupted, Britain becoming less safe, many, many businesses having to be bailed out, direct rule in Northern Ireland, and the stability of the union would be in jeopardy. That's what your cabinet secretary says. Do you get rid of him as well? Well, uh, he's got two jobs at the moment. Uh, maybe he needs to spend a little bit more time on the cabinet uh, secretary too. But actually, I like Mark Sedwell. Uh, but what we need to say is, look, 
what we're doing now, let's look at it from a different way, because a lot of these people were Remainers. What we're not trying to do is hold on to a relationship we had in the past. Yeah. But we've got to be good friends in the past. We've got to move forward. We've got 39 billion back on the table. We we've don't got have it no back. deal I'm sorry back to interrupt you about that. We don't have it back on the table because the legal advice to the government is absolutely clear that most of that money is money that we legally owe. Uh, no, if you look at the House of Lords uh, financial report on that, it might be about nine billion that is owed if we went to international courts and the well, rest is not. The, the Chancellor so, disagrees. Uh, and he, the Treasury says it's more like 25 billion and probably higher. No, and, that, and he says that is clear legal advice to the government. And, and that is because if you were paying to remain in for the implementation periods, which we know we'd be paying about mm. 10 billion a year. So if we are staying in for uh, two years, then he's quite right. We are paying paying that extra money, you're right, but if we don't, if we come out, that would be ours. So we'd work well with Mark Sedwill and say, look, okay. we so, know we're on a better position right, because let's, let's, we need a good relationship with the EU, okay, and that means that, that they me would you, be in a okay. far worse position let me on ask tariffs you, than we would have had to well, pay for let, them. let me ask you about something else that you've mentioned yourself, which is the role of Parliament in all of this. Mm -hmm. Parliament is very likely to vote down any government taking us towards no deal. That's where they are at the moment. Would you suspend Parliament during sort of late September and October in order to get out with no deal if you had to? That, would, uh, that wouldn't be my priority. I wouldn't be looking to do that, no. But if you had but, to, would but, you? But, but what I've said, hang on a sec, Andrew. What I've said is we'd use all the tools at our disposal because what but we have seen... that includes proroguing Parliament, uh, doesn't it? What we have seen by MPs going against the democratic vote of the country. They have torn up 400 years of history. They've ripped up the rule book. So it seems somewhat wrong to me that people wanting okay. to frustrate the vote can rip up the rule book, yet should I mm. want to use any tools at my disposal, I would be okay, uh, that, that is, seen that, that as is incorrect clear. when I'm helping ensure the democratic vote of the people. But, can you but, see but, can, but, a but, conflict but, of pro, thought pro, in that process? Prorog proroguing Parliament and the dates of the Queen's speech and so forth is something that has to be agreed between the Queen and the Privy Council. So to be clear, as Prime Minister, you would be prepared to go to the Queen and say, I don't want Parliament to sit for this period for these reasons. Andrew, did you see the hypocrisy between no, people saying about, that asking, they would rip I'm up the rule book and do. I would just be using the laws? And so, as I've said I'm to you clearly... I'm asking what you would do as Prime Minister. There's the Queen sitting there. You have to persuade the Queen to, uh, to, to stop Parliament sitting during a period. Do you ask her to do that or not? And I've been clear to you that I wouldn't be looking to do that. All I was pointing out was the hypocrisy of people wanting to frustrate the So you're not answering my question, Miles. It's and a very I, clear question. Well, if you're Prime Minister, do you, A, consider the possibility of suspending Parliament during that period? And if the answer, as I think, is yes, do you accept that you then have to sit in front of the Queen and say, don't allow Parliament to sit during October? And that is bringing the monarch absolutely into what would be a ferocious political Andrew, controversy. Andrew, I said I'd use every tool at my disposal. So that would include that. I'm saying it, it would. wouldn't be my priority and I wouldn't be looking to do that. But like I said, people frustrating the vote ripped up 400 years of rules. I personally would be using what were in my tools, as it were, my toolkit. I think there's a big difference. But if, you're too, if you open your toolkit and that involves dragging the monarch right into political controversy, you'd be prepared to do that? I wouldn't be looking to do that. You wouldn't be looking to do it, but you'd be prepared because to. Because I am a Democrat and I believe well, I in the clear. democracy okay. of the country. And I do want that to be clear because I'm standing up for the people who won the Democratic vote. Let's